Hello, welcome to the Monday, March 29th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida, but virtually today teaching in Saudi Arabia. So uh, this week, uh, the timing of the podcast may be a little bit off due to the time difference. Great diary this weekend from Guy about how to use Elastic Agent and a Microsoft Sandbox to essentially build a very quick and painless malware analysis system to do a quick runtime analysis on a malware sample. Now, first of all, Microsoft Sandbox allows you to essentially restrict a system and make it easy to undo any changes being made. He does list a configuration file that he used, uh, which is really just a very short XML snippet. And secondly, Elastic Agent will then report any changes that the malware made back to Elasticsearch, which then allows you uh, to view any changes that the sample made to the sandbox uh, in Kibana. Now, one little problem here that Guy had to overcome uh, whenever you restart the sandbox, of course, all of the tools that you installed to monitor your malware are gone. Guy does show a little uh, batch file that you can use uh, to automate the reinstallation of the tool after uh, you uh, reset uh, the sandbox. And then we got a second great diary this weekend from Daniel. Daniel is writing about how to figure out if a macro was actually executed with all the malware going around that essentially starts out with the user allowing a macro to run. It's pretty important that you figure out if a macro was responsible and if so, which one? And Daniel is going over some of the evidence that you will see in order to detect if a particular macro was executed. And also a great contribution here from one of our readers who commented that actually the Swift on security Sysmon rule set does uh, include uh, monitoring the execution of macros, which are the registry keys that Daniel is using here. And Apple had a surprise for us on Friday with a security update for iOS, iPad OS, as well as Watch OS. The update fixes a single vulnerability in WebKit. It's a universal cross-site scripting vulnerability. And yes, exploitation of this vulnerability has already been observed in the wild. However, as far as I can tell, uh, there is no easy available uh, public exploit for this vulnerability. And then also interesting that we didn't get an update for macOS or Safari, which of course also includes WebKit. So macOS may be affected as well. Maybe not exploitable, really don't know. And uh, I expect that we may see an update for macOS uh, later uh, this week, fixing this same vulnerability. So this is the second time in a row that Apple is releasing an update that patches a single vulnerability. We'll have to see if this is a new trend where Apple is trying to be more proactive or faster in addressing these vulnerabilities or maybe just a fluke due to the severity of these problems. And yes, we also got an update from Solar Winds for the Orion platform. It fixes four vulnerabilities. I wouldn't rate any of them as sort of super critical, have to patch now. One is rated as critical by Solar Winds. Now, this is a remote code execution vulnerability, but it does require authentication. Then there are two high vulnerabilities. Again, one remote code execution vulnerability that requires authentication as an administrator and a stored cross-site scripting vulnerability that apparently also requires an administrator account for exploitation. 
That later one may actually be interesting if the administrator account being required here is the victim's account. So where the exploit would store some cross-site scripting and then administrator just has to be exposed to the stored code. But the SolarWinds uh, vulnerability description does not have enough details uh, to really figure out if that's the case. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.